And here I was just about to jump aboard the Hi-Fi Separates is best train, but then I heard the Rotel 1592 Mark II. So let's talk about it. The Rotel 1592 Mark II is a Class AB stereo integrated amplifier that churns out an impressive 200 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 350 watts into 4 with incredibly low distortion delivered through two complete sets of 5-way binding posts. The Rotel is a full featured integrated amplifier with both analog and digital inputs as well as Bluetooth. There is a built-in phono preamp as well as dual subwoofer outs that are separate from the Rotel's preamp outputs, which means you don't have to decide between using a third-party amp for more power or connecting a subwoofer here. Honestly, the Rotel has everything the modern audiophile needs except for HDMI, which is disappointing. Design-wise, the Mark II version reviewed here doesn't appear markedly different from the previous generation. Like NAD and maybe even Emotiva, there isn't a great deal of variation when it comes to the brand's styling on a whole. But one thing that hasn't changed with the 1592 Mark II, like other Rotel pieces we've reviewed, is its solid and just confidence-inspiring build that it's here for the long haul. I wish I could say the same for the remote, which looks like something that's been kicking around since about 1988. Functional, yes but to the standard of the 1592 Mark II itself, no way. Now we have paired this amp with just about every speaker we have welcomed into our new home. Standout pairings include the Revel M16, the Eclipse RP600M Mark II, the KLH Model 3s and 5s, the Polk Audio R700 Towers, and the Wharfdale Elysian Tower speakers. If I had to pick a favorite pairing, it would be the Polk or the Wharfdales. The Rotel had the requisite juice to get the most from both of those speakers' woofers, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Other associated equipment included our SVS 3000 Micro Subwoofer, my reference Audio-Technica LP140 turntable fitted with my Ortofon 2M Black, LVB cartridge, and of course the Blue Sound Node. Now the Rotel is Rune tested, which is to say you can connect a Rune equipped device such as your laptop to the 1592 Mark II and take advantage of that platform, though I opted instead to stream almost exclusively through our node using my Tidal and Apple Music accounts, which enabled me to listen to both MQA and non-MQA encoded tracks. Jumping into sound quality, the Rotel comes within striking distance of another great integration amplifier, I mean stereo receiver, that we've had on this channel, and that's the Macintosh 7200. While I wouldn't classify the two as possessing the same performance, the thing that they have most in common is a sense of confidence when playing back just about any source material and at any volume when connected to, well, whatever speaker you want. But let's break it down. On paper, the Rotel has a somewhat similar power rating to the Emotiva HC1 mono amps we've just reviewed, only the Rotel is a Class AB amplifier through and through, whereas the Emotiva is a hybrid, mixing Class AB with Class H. When pitted head to head, the Rotel, despite being a little less powerful, didn't sound it, especially with respect to its bass performance. The Rotel exhibited the same level of control over both the Polk and Wharfdale woofers. If anything, and depending on the recording, the Rotel seemed to possess just a hair more detail and texture down low when listening to the Elysians. Though, when I connected the Emotiva Monos to the Rotel's preamp outs, the differences between the two amps diminished. So, this added bit of low-end texture and detail may come down to the Rotel's preamp section and not its amplifier. Either way, bass was impressive, though maybe not quite as well dampened or as authoritative as the Macintosh 7200 but it's close. If the Macintosh is a perfect 10, then the Rotel represents a solid 9. What's more, the Rotel's complete lack of color or character throughout the bass meant that instruments like kick drums, double bass, or bass guitars always felt plucky and immediate rather than plotting, which I always appreciate. Plus, should you need more bass, the Rotel has those dual subwoofer outputs. With regards to the mid-range, the Rotel is effortlessly detailed and focused. Again, if you're on the market for a warm or lush sounding amplifier, one that injects a bit of old school distortion to the mix, this is not going to be the integrated for you. Do not mistake that comment for lean or forward, but if you are one who believes that an amp or preamp or integrated should act or serve as a sort of tone control for your speakers, you should not consider the Rotel because it isn't that kind of piece. Bright or forward sounding speakers will remain bright and or forward. Laid back or warm speakers will still come off as laid back or warm because the Rotel is the epitome of neutral with respect to its mid-range performance. I felt as if I was getting a truer sense of my speaker's character when playing back my favorite tracks through the Rotel than through 
just about anything else I presently have in-house, which is high praise, at least in my book. Now, with respect to the treble, here's where I feel I may differ from some folks because I have a sinking suspicion that many would say the Rotel is forward or maybe even bright. Like I said a moment ago, if you already have bright or forward-leaning speakers, for example, Sonus Faber, Focal, or some older Klipsch speakers, the Rotel may seem like it is also bright. I assure you it's not, or at least it's not adding brightness to your speakers. What the Rotel is, is detailed to the nines. Be it the amps Class AB design or its excellent preamp section, the 1592 Mark II's high frequency performance comes across as more resolving and nuanced. If you get the Rotel and pair it with speakers like Sonus Faber or Focal and come away thinking that you're hearing more treble information, while you may not be wrong, it's actually more likely that whatever the Rotel replaced is just more veiled in its ability to resolve and separate finer details. Still, I wouldn't classify the Rotel as bright. If anything, it is a musical magnifying glass with respect to detail. Which is a great segue to the Rotel's soundstage. My God, is this integrated good. Because the 1592 Mark II excels in unlocking the detail within most recordings, its recreation of physical space provides a soundstage that is just incredibly well appointed. Boundaries seem of little concern to the Rotel. Now, if your speaker has poor dispersion to begin with, the Rotel isn't going to suddenly transform them into something that they're not. But with capable speakers, the Rotel will deliver the goods. Dynamically, the Rotel is excellent. Along with possessing the requisite power to handle orchestral swings and loud explosions, it does so with such control that things don't get sloppy or worse, distort when the tough gets going. Now, other things worth noting, the built-in phono preamp is pretty terrific, definitely on par or up to the standard that is the Ortofon 2M Black LVB. So those of you looking for a quality all-in-one solution for your vinyl rig should definitely take note. The built-in DAC is also really good, though admittedly you are going to enjoy the highest quality bit rates and whatnot using its USB inputs rather than its coax and optical ones, which is pretty common. That said, I wouldn't shy away from any of its digital connections. In fact, there wasn't much, if any, any difference in overall sound quality between any of the digital ports in everyday listening scenarios. Now compared to the Marantz Model 40N, which you know that I love, the Rotel is the better amplifier sonically, in my opinion, exhibiting greater control over speakers' drivers, which is immediately apparent when listening to bass-heavy tracks, regardless of the genre. Also, Rotel allows for more high-frequency finesse, dare I say presence. The soundstage definition and separation is also clearer with the Rotel compared to the Marantz. But, and this is a big but for me, the Marantz has all of the same functionality as the Rotel and then some. Yeah, here comes HDMI to save the day. Plus, Marantz has built-in music streaming, whereas the Rotel relies solely on Bluetooth. So, if sound quality is all that matters to you, and to hell with features, the Rotel is arguably the better amp. But you know me and my need for modern conveniences. I'm actually leaning towards Rotel because I can use the Blue Sound Note for HDMI connectivity, but you know I prefer less clutter, so this one's tough. Compared to old reliable, our musical fidelity M5 SI, well, I have finally found an integrated that has gotten me to contemplate letting go of our M5 SI. The musical fidelity has stood the test of time, being a staple in our collection for over two years. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The Rotel is simply better. It's better sonically, possessing far greater control and with it a sense of appreciable detail, regardless of the music or speaker pairing. Not to mention, the Rotel offers way more by way of features. But if three grand is simply too much money, and I completely understand if it is, at one third the price, the Audiolab 6000A Play continues to impress me. While it lacked the raw power to fully match the low end grip of the Rotel when connected to the power hungry Wharfdale Elysian Towers, it wasn't exactly embarrassed. Actually, I was so impressed by the Audiolab in this head to head that I tried a little experiment. Running the Audio Lab as a strict preamp with a pair of Emotiva XPA HC1 mono amps connected, this pairing matched the Rotel in the bass department while giving up little in terms of detail. I still think the Rotel is the better overall option, but it was close, at least to me. Now, you can save even more money by ditching the HC1s in favor of, say, Emotiva's own XPA2 Gen 3, which would still give you more power than the Rotel while not really forcing you to sacrifice too much convenience because... The Audiolab and Rotel are similar with respect to their options list. 
Wrapping up, the Rotel 1592 Mark II, like many Rotel products before it, impresses me. We review a lot of integrated amplifiers on this channel, and it has taken the Rotel to get me to even contemplate making a change. While there are other great options on the market, the 1592 Mark II has captured my attention in ways few others this side of five grand have. Honestly, I would need to step up to something like the Macintosh 7200 or the Musical Fidelity M8XI to outright best the Rotel, which for me is a non-starter, for those are both so far out of reach of my budget. So while you can do better, back on planet Earth or maybe low Earth orbit, the rest of us have options like the 1592 Mark II, so highly recommend it. So that's it. That is now my review of the Rotel 1592 Mark II, but I wonder what Christy thought of it. I'm with you. This is a great amp. It is. And I mean great. Mm -hmm. My only complaint... <laughs> <laughs> Hit me with it. ...is that calculator-like front display. I knew what it. What the f... <gasps> Seriously, now that I've seen it on more than one of their products, mm -hmm. it's kind of unforgivable. Kind of like the remote. I mean, I just... It looks dated and cheap, mm -hmm. and which is such a contradiction, uh, because considering otherwise, it's really solidly built and looks mm -hmm. expensive. I just, I can't. Can't I, unsee it. I can't unsee it. <laughs> Why? Why? Yeah. Please, please, Rotel. You, I know you can do better, but that's really like, I don't know if it's being nitpicky. Mm -hmm. I think at, how much is this thing? It's about $3,200. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I would rather just not have the display. See, I'm kind of with you on that. I kind of feel like, I mean, it, it comes in handy. It does. Um, but I kind of feel like maybe creative design would have made it maybe not necessary. Yeah. Um, or we know that they have nicer displays, right? Mm -hmm. Um, cause we reviewed their receiver and granted that thing has a giant screen on the front of it, um, which isn't a touch screen, which I called out in that review, but, but I thought it looked pretty similar. It it was no, no, still... no, no, no. It was a full color display and it wasn't that kind of graphing calculator type display. It was, it was decidedly different. Okay. Um, I guess I'm thinking of the Rotel Tribute. Yes. The Tribute you know? display is, I, I don't want to say it's the same because maybe the display on the 1592 is a little bigger, but same basic principle. It's basically the same. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so apart from the display and the anti theft device that they call the remote. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, seriously, this thing is massive. Um, it's it not is, heavy or anything. It's just, yeah. it just feels like something, um, the Flintstones would have used. It, it kind of, it to me, it just looks like a universal remote you would buy at the, you know, yeah. down at your local Best Buy. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I mean, yeah, beyond that, I have, I don't, I don't, well, okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Design wise, I have no other complaints. Okay, good. <laughs> I do not understand the continuing to continuing to leave out HDMI as an option. Yeah. I just like come on. Let's let's stop pretending that people don't want that. Yeah. I think they do, especially if you're going to include all the other modern conveniences. Mm -hmm. Uh I I I just I feel like it's time. Yeah, I'm I'm 100% with you on that. I and it's one of the reasons why if I don't ultimately plunk down my credit card to buy this from Rotel and stick with the Marantz, is that HDMI connectivity. Um, sonically, the Rotel is better, but just ease of use and how we listen on our free time every single day, um, the Marantz fits our lifestyle better. Um, and it's a big deal. And I don't understand why Rotel doesn't include that stuff because they make great processors. They make a great receiver. Um, that has HDMI connectivity. So they right. have the pieces. They have the boards. Right. I mean, I just, I think there's a lot of companies that are, that are reluctant to bring HDMI mm -hmm. to their products. Yeah. And it just, it, it confounds me. Yeah. I don't get it. Whether, I don't care if we're talking about Rotel or somebody else. It, it's just, it, at some point, like, stop <laughs> leaving it off and just give it to me. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I still like the Audio Lab. Yeah. I think it's such a great value for the money. It is. And I do like, I prefer the look of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just really streamlined. If I didn't need an exorbitant amount of power yeah. for my speakers, then I would go with the Model 40N by mm -hmm. Marantz yep. because it kind of gives me everything that I want that the Rotel doesn't. Except that maybe, it does, does it have the dual sub outs on the, uh, on the Marantz? On the Marantz? Mm -hmm. 
No. No, I don't. No, it does not. But I don't want, I don't ever want that anyway. So for me, well, that's don't. not, yeah. for me, yeah. well, you, this is my take. So <laughs> for me, guys, yeah. I don't, I, that's not something I need. So yeah. that would be maybe the thing that would send me towards the Morants. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I could see that. But there's a couple that you didn't mention that I have a feeling people may want to know about. So Other comparisons, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah. Right. So I'm, Hit me with them. I'm curious <laughs> how you would compare the Rotel to Yamaha's higher integrated, it's like the AS1200 or mm. the 2200. Now, I know the 3200, which is the top of the mark of that line, yeah. is way more expensive um, I, I, I'll, maybe I'll say something that's either going to make me very popular or not very well liked. I think the 1592 Mark II competes with the Yamaha 3200, not the 1200. Or the 2200? Or the 22. I think the Rotel is closer in performance and quality to the flagship Yamaha integrated than it is the more entry, entry points into that retro, uh, class. Right. I so. mean, I love the meters, mm-hmm. you know, I love the Yamaha, those Yamaha, uh, integrated. Mm-hmm. Um, so just for the meters alone, I might, I might want for style factor. Yeah. I might want one of those, Yeah. but if I needed more power, the Rotel becomes a total bargain. Okay. So, all right. Enough about Yamaha. What about the Technics, the 700 G? Now I know we don't ha- no, no, no guys. We still, we have, um, we still haven't heard the new one. Mm-hmm. So we can only really talk about yeah. the first generation. If I'm going off of the first generation one, I do believe that it's about $500 less. It is markedly lower powered, but I think that the G 700 integrated is among the finest looking integrateds that I have ever laid eyes on. That said, um, and again, this is Gen 1. I have no idea if Gen 2 is different. What's different? We don't have it. Um, the Rotel is better, in my opinion, than the original G700. But you would save some money if you were to buy a G700, even a first generation one right now. So. Why do you think it's better? Um, the more Because I know you loved the I love the it. First I absolutely Gen love it. And I, I, I've always regretted not buying it um, for permanent use. The reason why is it just comes down to the power. The Rotel, when you have that type of power and that power is able to be delivered to speakers like, you know, three-way towers like the Polk R700 or the Wharfdale Elysians, it matters. It matters. And that is where you start to begin to appreciate maybe your investment in larger or higher end speakers. Um, I would not be surprised if you took something like a Wharfdale Elysian, which is not necessarily difficult to drive, but anything that has those big massive woofers and a well dampened cabinet like that speaker does, power is going to be your friend. And I could see people doing, say, a Technics or even a Marantz on a speaker like the Elysian and going, it's nice, but, you know, the bass is a little bit warm or romantic or round, round, rounder, you know, around the edges and stuff. And then you get on the Rotel and you're like, oh, oh, this speaker can slam. And that's the difference. And I think that you may fall more into the category of it's nice with something like the Technics on bigger speakers. Whereas the Rotel is just like uh, Adam Driver and in, in Star Wars, <laughs> you know, it can just pile it on and it matters. Okay. So. Well, any other ones? No, that's it. That, that well, it? that's all I can think of. Okay. Anyway, yeah. I mean, yeah, at three grand, there's there's obviously a a host of options out there, and I'm not at all suggesting that the Rotel is the end all be all. I'm just saying that in our travels on this channel. This is probably the first integrated amp in a year that has made me really go, ooh, I might need this one. Um, like I said, haven't made up my mind yet, but it is that level of good. And I do always really love coming back to it. Even when I'm listening to something else, even stuff that's more expensive, when the Rotel comes back in, I'm like, oh, yeah, it is pretty good. <laughs> it so, is good. Yeah, it's it a is nice good. piece. I just, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting back getting past the display. 
Yeah, I can get past the display. I'll tell you this. If it had an HDMI with ARC input in the back, it would already be mine. I, I, that I can flat out tell you. They yeah, would've, they'd I already have that. my money. I believe that. Yeah. So. Okay. Anything else? Nope. All right. Well, that is now our review of the Rotel 1592 Mark II integrated amplifier. What'd you guys think? Let us know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, my question of the day for you is pretty simple. And that is, what does an integrated amp need to have in order for you to leave your separate components behind? I have a feeling it's going to be a good discussion, so let's get it going. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead and ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, or you uh, send us a super thanks, or you become a member, all three of these ways on top of watching and hitting that like button are great ways that you have shown your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile, and that is it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye.